welcome to YXYA on the road. And we are on the road in good old Shoreditch. Oh, My man. gosh, it is good to be back. Feels good to be in East. Oh, it feels great to be in East. Absolutely love it. But listen, we've got a great service in store for you today. Whatever you're at, whatever you're doing, you're going to love it. Benny boy, what we got coming up? You know what? I'm not too sure if you guys still have your New Year's resolutions, but mine is definitely to get into the Bible more. So on Monday, we're launching a YX Reggae foundational Bible study. For Amazing. anyone who is interested, youth, young adult, get involved. The information is on the screen. Invest in it, man. It's got to be vibe. Listen, be a part of that. But before we go any further, we're going to head into worship. So let me pray for you before we do. Father God, I thank you for every single person who is part of this service. Will you bless him as we worship you in Jesus' name? Amen. 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 Precious blood has left me forgiven. Pure like the whitest of snow. way come on let me pray for you I don't know what it is that you're going through but I do know that in everything Jesus remains the same today yesterday and forever you may be worrying about school or all sorts of stuff but come on let's fix our attention on him and let's pray father God I thank you for every single young person every single young adult watching right now God I pray will they know that you are their perfect peace that we can lift our heads to you in Jesus name amen Oh, how sweet it did you get?
Amazing. Well, listen, we're coming up to the part of the service, which I love. We're about to give right now. And so if you do this on the screen in front of you, are different ways that you can give. But I'm always interested, man, about how people see this moment and what it means to them. So Benny Boy. Yes. What does this moment mean to you? What would you say to encourage people? Oh, man, I love, I love that we're talking about giving in this moment. And, you know, when I think about the tithe, I always think about generosity. And I think people often think generosity is always attached to someone's character, right? Oh, that's a generous person, that's a generous man or woman. But actually, generosity is in the core of what we believe as, as Christianity. As Christians, we believe that God was generous to us through Jesus. And as a result of that, we get to give back. And I'm just reminded of that verse in Proverbs 3, 5. And if you've got time, I recommend Dan, read it in the message. It is a vibe. Okay. But it says this, trust in the Lord with all your heart and catch this, 
do not depend on your own understanding. I love that. And I think in this moment, we have an opportunity to trust in the Lord. And as we trust in the Lord with our giving, as we trust in the Lord with maybe giving, maybe you've never given before and this is your first time, I want to encourage you, it's never too late. Um, not only are you going to be blessed, but as YXYA, as a church community, we all get to be blessed because we're putting our trust in a God who is good, who doesn't just give once, Dan, but he gives all the time. So I hope that encourages people today Amazing. to trust in God. Listen, 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 Ben, I love that. Listen, why don't you pray? Yes. And we'll go from there, bro. Would love to. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to give into your house. Lord, right now we make a decision to trust in you with our finances. And I pray, Lord, that as we give into your house, <clears throat> that you're going to use this to bless so many people in our church. Father, we give you the praise and all of the honour. We love you so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Listen, McLaren Lewis is going to be bringing the word in just a short while. But I want to speak to you about crews because if you're not part of a crew, crew is basically a place where you can find your people. And I know some of you may be going, listen, online right now in lockdown is dead. But cruise is not dead. It is amazing and you need to be a part of it. So we've got a little video just to give you a little snippet about what takes place in cruise. Take a look. Hey guys, welcome back to this week's crew video. Hey church, I hope you've been enjoying our historical journey as much as I have. Today, we're going to be learning and gleaming from the exploits of William Booth. William Booth was born in Victorian times. Now, in these times, there was actually reform going on that William would actually be at the forefront of later on in life. But at this moment in time, society was built on the foundation of class. There was the upper, the middle, and the lower. Employment rates were climbing, but the issue was, was the lower class was actually getting jobs that they, that they wouldn't be able to get out of the cycle of poverty with. At 13 years old, William Booth left school and started an apprenticeship in a pawnbroker's where he saw this phenomena happen um, for himself. As people came in and out of the shop selling their positions and positions that they'd stolen in order to feed their families. See, at 15 years old, Booth became a Christian. And this intrigue, this interest in the poor became a passion. And so in his study, he ventured out to make sure and hope that he was able to reach those of the lower class in their poverty and give them purpose. He based a lot of his beliefs on the, um, on the theological writings of a man we've already spoken about, John Wesley. It was summed up like this. <laughs> the power of our Christian message loses its relevance if it's not partnered with social action. For years upon years, Booth continually jumped from place to place, even turning to being a traveling preacher in order to cross the lines in society to reach the people that he thought needed it the most. In his frustration, he found that the church's tactics and strategies to reach these people were slow or even sometimes ineffective. And so after years of navigating all of this trouble, without, not without criticism, not without hardship, being beaten and scorned to, to the point where he couldn't even walk some evenings and going out and preaching that same message all over again. He finally came to the place with his wife at Catherine where they settled here in London and they started what we now know as the Salvation Army. See, in, um, in their travels, they had stumbled upon a perfect strategy in order to cross the lines and borders that society had already set up. And so they started in the Salvation Army um, a matchstick factory, a shop, and a program that meant that the undeserving poor and the deserving poor were able to get jobs that actually had a decent wage where they're able to build a life and get out of this cycle of poverty. 
the undeserving poor were those who were caught up in criminality in order to feed their families. And because of that situation, they were in and out of jail, which meant they weren't able to build a life to get out of this wretched cycle of poverty I was speaking of. The deserving poor were those who were caught up in all of this by association. See, the beauty of this strategy meant that he was actually able to reach out to those in poverty and put purpose in their hands. He described it this way, that the opportunity was the bait, but salvation was always the hook that, <laughs> that brought people into a place where purpose was placed in their hands. See, he reached out to the, those in poverty and placed purpose in them, but at, on the other side of the coin, he spoke to the religious middle class of the time and, and implored them to reach into their pockets and reach out into society so people could align purpose with this religion that they, that they had succumbed to in generation after generation. <laughs> See, the beauty of the Salvation Army was in the strategy, and the strategy was in the name. They had sergeants and majors and servicemen. And so when you join the Salvation Army from wherever, wherever it is that you were at, whether you were in the lower class, in the middle class, or the upper, you joined the army to wage a war against poverty and injustice. In your rank, you had responsibility. So they would strategize and take over certain parts of the city, giving out opportunity through those programs, through schools, through um, women's refuges, through all of these different things, commandeering hospitals, and then taking over that part of the city. And that, that became taking over the entire city. And from that, they took over countries. And then across the pond, abroad, to see effective change happening all over the world. But this wasn't without criticism. See, the churches were criticizing Booth and the Salvation Army because they saw it as taking a holy message to an unholy place. The alcohol industry complained that those in poverty weren't um, drinking as much alcohol and so they were losing business. Left and right, they battled all of this and his response, it wasn't that they were taking a message to those of the lower class and watering it down so it was a lot easier to swallow, but in fact that he was using everything at his disposal in order to articulate this message and bring it to the places that needed it most. And so the Salvation Army would meet in halls and, and theaters and sing songs of a secular nature, all glorifying God, because these were the places where those of the lower class would congregate and have parties. And so right now, we're actually going to sing one of those songs that they used to sing. William Booth wrote it. And as we listen to it, we will see that the message that he speaks is exactly what is spoken in this song. And that message is that this purpose, it is absolutely for everyone. That as we come together and align our purpose with his, we are actually able to see just like an ax that foundational church that we saw where there was no unmet need among them. And in fact, that God would add to their number daily those who were being saved. Let's have a listen. Oh, boundless salvation, devotion of love. Oh, fullness of mercy, Christ born from above. The Oh 
2 Peter 1 verse 3 says this, His divine power has given, given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. See, from that verse, I, I see that we have everything that we need in relationship with Jesus Christ in order to go on this journey of, of, of purpose and, and plan that He has for every single one of us. So I bought a book the other day and it finally came after a couple of days of waiting. And anyway, it came in this massive box, which I was so confused by because I had to get a scissors to cut the, um, the, the ties around the box, get the tape off. Once I opened the box, there was paper and confetti and all of the stuff that I had to get through. Then finally, at the bottom of the box, there was an envelope. And I opened the envelope and I finally got to the book that I actually bought, the thing that I wanted, the thing that I actually needed. <laughs> See, so often it's so easy to place God in a box. In First Peter, they were talking about, or Second Peter, excuse me, they were talking about the nature of the society at the time would wrap up God in rules and regulations before they were able to connect with Him. In Booth's time, in the Victorian times, it was class. Your place in society was what determined whether you had purpose. My question is, what is it for you today? Are you, are you stuck in rules and regulations? Or like me, do you sometimes think that God has to be in this perfect wrapped box where you have to fix everything within yourself before you can actually approach Him? Or maybe you've put Him in a box of a service where it has to be loud with thousands of people around you so you can actually connect with Him. In First Peter, it explains that we have everything that we need in relationship with Him to complete the purpose and plan that He has for each and every one of us. And that purpose and plan is described in First Corinthians as one that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, that no mind can even conceive. See, this is the plan that you will call to. That means that there's still things in your life that you haven't seen yet. That means for us as a community, there's still programs and things that we can be a part of that we haven't even heard of yet. Who knows in a hundred years time what they'll be saying of the church community that we are a part of here at Hillsong and what we did to actually change things around us. Now, it's lockdown three as I speak to you right now. And you've probably heard a million stories about someone who started their jogging journey during lockdown. And you're about to hear another one. Because <laughs> see, in the first lockdown, I was having a conversation with my sister about what we would do in our, in our time that we we're allowed to actually go out and exercise. And my first suggestion was go for a run. I couldn't have been laughed or scorned out of that conversation quick enough because she responded by saying, the only thing that I ever get from running is sore knees, sweaty, and a whooping cough that I have to deal with for a week. But now being in the third lockdown, our conversation is completely different. Now we talk about what shoes she wants for her birthday, or what, what, what running secrets we can actually trade in, which I promise I actually don't have a lot. But I asked my sister this question, I was like, what, what's changed from the first lockdown to this one? How come all of a sudden you're a running guru? And she said this, nothing changed. I was simply sitting on a couch and I made a choice to get up and go for a run, which was so funny to me because in the first lockdown, she had a list of excuses that was almost as long as the achievements that Booth and the Salvation Army had made over a hundred years. But it is so interesting to me that nothing about my sister's situation changed. She simply made a choice. See church, I want to bring it to our attention that in, um, in living in the UK, we're actually classed to be in the highest percentile of living wage in the world. And so actually when Booth was speaking to the poor, those in poverty and giving them purpose, he wasn't actually referring to us. It was more, we were more akin to those middle class religious people. The ones that he was asking to reach in and reach out to those who are in need. We're living in a time where it's all rosy or anything like that. In fact, it's exactly the opposite. But nothing about your situation 
nothing, nothing about what you're going through right now changes the fact that you can make a choice. Imagine a community where we chose to, to sponsor kids in a far off land through compassion and actually change a community that we're not even a part of. Imagine a community that, we, um, that made a choice to, to partner or volunteer for love your neighbor and see those in poverty have connection and also be fed and clothed. Imagine a community where people were accepted for who they are, no matter what they look like, no matter the color of their skin, their skin, no matter their class, their wealth, no matter how they smell, that they were loved with the same love that we've been talking about. A love that died on a cross and rose again so we can walk in this purpose and plan that has been set before us. Man, imagine the community that made a choice to sit down next to the, the person in school who never, who never ever gets talked to besides on social media to experience cyberbullying. That's the community that I want to be a part of. That sounds like a community to me where there's no unmet need and where God would add to their number daily. In 1 Timothy 4 verse 12, it's a, it's a scripture that I quote as a youth pastor a lot. It says, Don't let them look down on you because you are young. But instead, be an example to the believers in speech, in conduct, in purity. And the list goes on. <laughs> See, Paul was actually giving advice to Timothy as he took on the reins of, of the next generation of ministry. And his youth was something that he thought was a barrier for him to do that. In that time, it was youth. In Booth's time, it was poverty. But that same advice that Paul gave to Timothy, that same advice that, that Booth gave to those in poverty, I give to you. Don't let them look down on you because you are young. Don't let them look down on you because you are inexperienced. Don't let them look down on you because you don't know much about the Bible yet. Man, don't let them look down on you because of the mistakes that you've made or what happened to you when you were younger. Right now, we're in a situation where all we need to do is choose to believe that Jesus is who He says He is. And in that, we can set an example in speech, in conduct. And together, who knows the incredible things that people will speak of, of that Hillsong Church in London, the place where they positively shaped society. And so now there's some people that I want to pray with, and there's people I want to pray for. Today, I want to pray with you if you've never, ever made that choice. That choice to believe that Jesus is who He says He is. That choice to become a Christian. See, in Romans 10, 9, it says this, is that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. And you're saved into this purpose that we've been speaking of this whole time. And so if that's you, I'd, I'd love to pray with you. All we're doing is simply putting words to the choice that you're making. So come on, would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you that you rose again from the dead, that I may have purpose, that I may have walk in a plan in relationship with you. Thank you, God, that I am forgiven. Help me each day to live glorifying your name. Amen. Man, I'm so excited for you. There is there's so much that you can be a part of and the team will, will help you out straight after this but there's some people I want to pray for see maybe you've already made this choice to believe but today I'm asking if you want to make a choice to step into this plan and purpose that is for you a purpose so big that no eye is seen no ear is hurt no mind is conceived and so as I'm praying it's a conversation I'm speaking and I'm listening and I'm hoping that as I speak on your behalf in this prayer that you'd be in a place where you'd be able to listen. Listen for instruction, listen for inspiration from God Himself. So come on, let, let us, let's pray. Father, we thank You for every person who has taken this step in this moment. 
Lord God, as I speak right now, Lord Jesus, that you'd be planting seeds, Lord God, of hope, of inspiration, of ideas, Lord God, of instruction, of what the next step in this purpose and plan, Lord God, to, to positively shape society, to see effective change, Lord God, in our lives, so big that it affects the lives of the people around us. In your holy and your precious name, we all say together, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Wow, what an awesome decision you've just made. We honestly are so pumped for you. If you scan the QR code on the screen now, or just follow the link in the YouTube description box below, it'll take you to our I've Decided website. This website is full of resources made with you in mind to help you figure out your next steps in your journey of faith. And don't forget to fill out the form so one of our team can get in touch with you. Thanks Lottie, and just like she said, for those who made that decision, please do make sure you get in contact. We're so excited for you guys, and there's so much in store for you. Amazing, well listen, big up McLaren Lewis for a great word from God right there. Thank you very much, sir. But listen, we're finishing up our service. Whatever you're doing this week, we pray it is gonna be amazing that you're gonna feel the peace of God over your life. Uh, have a great week. Don't forget cruise this Thursday, this Friday. God bless, take care, love you. Yeah.